Hey, my YouTube family, I'm excited that we are starting a new series entitled The Signs of Life. Listen, U-turn, bridge crossing, stop. What sign is God speaking to you in this time right now in your life? We're praying for revelation, but we need you to be a part of it. Why? Because we're family right here on YouTube. I'm excited, I need you to be excited that God's about to give us revelation on the signs of life. I want you to get your Bibles. We're gonna to go to Daniel, the fourth chapter. Daniel, the fourth chapter. This word has been fire all day. It's been, an, it's been um, a, a kind of strange in the spirit what God is doing. So we preach in sermon series. In other words, God will give us a subject and we'll take that subject and we'll preach it for a whole month. If you pay attention, we've gone beyond a month in this series because God is speaking loud and clear. Someone asks, well, where do you get these series from? Scripture says, those that are mine know my voice. So we don't come up with just a good idea. We have to, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So you have to spend time with God for God to give you what to say to the body of Christ. How many of y'all have been feeling as if when we speaking, like we coming right down your street, like you, you talking to me? Some of y'all be like, you got a camera in my house. I'm not that person, okay? Look at me. So where do we get this series from? I was literally driving down the street, and I began to pay attention to the street signs. And the, I could hear the Lord saying, um, I want to speak to you about what you see in the natural, that I can give you revelation in the Spirit. That for different street signs that everybody pays attention to, I can speak to you and show you something in the spirit realm that is happening so that the body of Christ can be aware. Today, we're going to speak from the subject, road under repair. What does that mean? The road is not destroyed. You just can't drive down it now. That something's being fixed. Watch me. And once it is fixed, you'll be able to go through. Hear me clearly. There's some people that God wants to send in your direction. But right now, they can't get to you because something in you is being repaired. You're not destroyed. Hear me clearly. It's, it's going to make it to you, but I'm going to need you to be fixed before I bring it to you. Because if I bring it to you too soon, it will never make it to its destination. I don't know about you, but I would rather he put everything on hold. Get me ready so when it come, I don't mess it up. And it takes a mature person to admit that God is fixing me. He's fixing my temperament. He's working on my attitude. He's teaching me to be patient. He's showing me how to deal with finances. Because if you give me a million now, I might be broke in two years. But if you show me how to budget and if you show me bring me structure, those of you that know that God is up to something in your life, please open your mouth and say, he's repairing me. So if you go to Daniel, I want to show you a king by the name of King Nebuchadnezzar. He was a man that God had allowed to be powerful. He was the king of Babylon. He was not the king of Jerusalem. He was not the king of Judea. He was the king of Babylon. He was only able to do what God allowed him to do. If you study scripture, we, we always talk about the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel. This is the king that took them captive. But it's for a season. I need you to understand me. If you study the scripture, if you go to Daniel 4, he is successful, and we know he's successful. In Daniel 4 and 4, he says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at home. I was in my palace, contented and prosperous. In other words, he is sitting in his palace, and he's straight. He all good. 
God's been good to him. How many of y'all know that you have, have, is there anybody that you've been in a good space ever in your life? And when you sit in that space, you know that God gave you everything you have. I need you to make sure that you're not sitting next to somebody that think that they got there on their own. Please open your mouth and say, God's been good to me. So while he's in this palace, he has a dream. In the dream, he has a dream of a tree that stood so high that the whole world could see it. It reached the heaven. In the dream, the branches were huge. In the dream, the roots ran deep. In the dream, there were fruit on every branch. The tree was so powerful that birds would fly to the tree and build nests in it. The tree was so powerful that even animals would come under the tree and everybody reaped from the benefits of the tree. But then all of a sudden, a messenger came from heaven that said, cut the tree down. Cut it down. But when you cut it down, pay attention to this. Leave the stoop there in the same dirt, in the same grass, but I need you to put some bars over it to protect the stoop. What do you mean? Let's, let me show you what I mean right here. You ready? Look at the screen. In, in Daniel 4 and 15, let the stump and its roots bound with iron and bronze, it's like a fence over it to protect it, remain in the ground in the grass of the field. What does that mean? It's been cut down, but I'm going to protect it. I'm going to leave it in the dirt that it's always been in. I'm going to let the roots continue to grow. Because it, watch me, and I'm going to protect it because what? I believe that it could come back. Something's going to be repaired because it's going to produce fruit again. Some of y'all, you've lost some things, but God's about to repair you. Oh, y'all not getting it yet? Are you that slow? I need you to, hey, come here. What you lost cannot be compared. Let's go ahead and start out young. Let's start out early. Look at somebody say, I decree and I declare, your ladder is going to be greater. I need you to grab that. I need you to grab that. I need you to grab that. I need you, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need to put a fence around that. I need, I need to put a fence around that. Hear me clearly. Hey, Reg, your ladder is going to be greater. You ready? Come on, lean in. So when the king has this dream, he bring in different people who are supposed to be able to interpret the dream. Nobody can interpret the dream. Finally, Daniel walks in. This is what he do. He's a dreamer, and he interprets dreams. When he walks in, God immediately gives him the answer. Let's put a pin right there. For some of y'all, you're about to be invited into rooms not to do what you don't do. But when you come in, it won't, the room won't settle until you show up. You're going to get it in a few more minutes. You're going to get it in a few more minutes. So Daniel goes in, and Daniel says to the king, King, I got the interpretation of the dream, and I need you to hear something from me. That tree represents you. You are that tree. King, you might get cut off, cut down. But hear me clearly. God's going to guard you to let you know that it's not over for you. God's going to protect you. Because there's so much more still left in you. Come on. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. And some of y'all are sitting next to some people who've lost some things. But I came to tell you, as long as you can inhale and exhale, that means that God still got time to bounce you back. Come on. Open your mouth and say, my restoration is going to be greater. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Ready? He said, no, listen, this is not going to be permanent. I, I, I want to really break this down. It's a scheduled time that you're going to have to be in a low place. 
It's a scheduled time. Why does God give him this scheduled time? Because God knows how long it might take for you to break. See, so you might be a little bit more stubborn than the average person, so we have to let you stay there. I can't bring you up prematurely because you're going to mess up again. But I, 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 watch me. But hear me clearly. When you get up, come on here. You, you're not going to be down always. You have a bounce back date. I felt that one right there. Can I tell 12.30 something? I didn't hear that at 9.30. I didn't hear that at... You have a bounce back date. Yay! 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 Okay, calm down. Too soon. Too soon. Calm down. Woosa. 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 When you bounce back, you'll never be in the negative again. When you bounce back, eyes haven't seen and ears haven't. I'm protecting you until you get to your date. Sam, watch the scripture. Watch the scripture. The set time. Look at this. Seven times will pass by for you. What does that mean? King Nebuchadnezzar, you're a little stubborn. So I'm going to need to hold you down for about seven years until you acknowledge. Watch me. You got to get this line because some of y'all will miss it. The Most High is sovereign over all the kingdoms on the earth and gives them to whom, whom anyone he wishes. What does that mean? He's sovereign. What does it mean? Even when you're down, he's still God. Even when it looked like the enemy got his foot on you, he's still sovereign. The devil want to kill you, but God won't let the devil kill you. The enemy want to... Those of you that believe that regardless of your situation, he sit on the throne, he reign on the throne, he's still in charge, he's still in control. Can you lift your hands and worship the sovereign, 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 you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Then he says something that messed me up. He said, now, King, I'm going to tell you something. It really don't have to get that bad. I just want to warn you. You could flip this. He says to him, look at the screen, in verse 27. Therefore, your majesty, be pleased to accept my advice. What's your advice? Renounce your sins. Bro, just do what's right. You don't even have to be cut off. Just do what's right. I need you to lean in because I know how some of y'all think. Religious people, you think, oh, he in sin. You be thinking, oh my God, he must be in fornication. He must be in adultery. He must be smoking. He must be drinking. He must be, he, no, 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 no. Stop right there. It's the small foxes. You ain't smoking, but you a liar. You ain't drinking, but you got the worst attitude in the building. You don't speak to nobody. You're evil. You speak in tongues. You're arrogant. You're judgmental. You talk about everybody, but you're the main one on the floor. When you get done shouting, it is the little foxes. I ain't shacking, but the one you live with, you don't love. What's the sin? Guys, when I started reading this, I was like, what did he do? Okay, so tell me what the sin is. Because whatever the sin is, I want to make sure that I don't mess up. Show me what the sin is, because whatever it is, that he said, if you don't do this, if you just avoid this and you just... So then I, the Bible says, he gave him this word, but then 12 months later, he couldn't remember what had, what, what had been prophesied. And we get a peep into what the sin is. 
this is going to mess some of y'all up. You ready? Here's the scene. Ready? Bible. <laughs> Twelve months later, as the king was walking on, his, on the roof of his royal palace of Babylon, please pay attention to the words that come out of his mouth. He said, is not this the great Babylon I have built as the royal residence by my mighty power for the glory of my majesty. What's the sin? You the sin. Because you keep talking about you more than you talk about God. When you give your education more credit than you give God, the only reason you graduated is not that you're that smart, but God gave you the wisdom to get out of school. You sitting here talking about your house. God gave you the keys to the house. You just want me to see the house, but you never mention the source of how you got the <sighs> And I'm looking at some of y'all, and you want to know what the problem is? You're the problem. Because when you look back over your life, you shouldn't even be here. God! I'm trying to make sure if you sit next to Nebuchadnezzar, I need you to look at somebody and tell them, God has been good to... As I look back over my life and I think things over, what you gonna say? So you still sitting there? You still sitting there? Because you were supposed to lose your mind. You were supposed to have a nervous breakdown. You were supposed to go crazy. The only reason that you didn't do it is that God has been the keeper of your soul. I need you to make sure you're not sitting next to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar take credit for everything. But everybody, well, can I tell you something? I got, a, I got a house, but every time I put the key in the door, I'll be like, thank you, Jesus. I got a car. Every time I started, I'll be like, Rosso Toraba. I got a closet. Every time I walk in, I'll be like, won't it will? I need you to make sure you sit next to somebody that give God all the glory. Hold on, I'm about to count. Check the one to your right and your left. And on the count of three, if you sit there, you take credit. If you give God praise, you give him the glory. One, two, three, go! Hey! Look where he brought me from. Broke me out of poverty. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. For what? For the things. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. So let's let's, let's explain. Let's explain. Obviously, I'm trying to sit down. I'm trying to make you, I'm trying to make you stop pointing at you and give God praise. I'm trying to make sure that you understand that everything that he, you got, God did it. I'm trying to get you to the point that you realize the only reason you haven't broken yet is that he's a, he's a keeper. 
Yes, he is. Okay, wait, wait. I'm really out here now. I'm really out here now. Uh, so you ain't going to sit down. You ain't going to say nothing? You just going to sit there? I, I try to give you a chance to make sure he get the glory. Yeah, but you ain't going to say nothing, huh? You're going to sit up in here because you got some on some red bottoms. You better remember when you were barefoot. You don't want to sweat your weave out. You better remember when you had a full kitchen set back here. You, you, you. So let me show you why he had to be cut. Let me show you, because some of y'all, I just want to show you, because it's a spirit of arrogance. There's a spirit of pride that's slipping up in here. At the moment that some of y'all get a job, you get a little money. Because a little money is a lot of money to somebody who didn't never had no money. You got a couple of thousand in the bank, now you think you're doing something. Thousands ain't no money, boo. So let me show you this, and, and this is for everybody. This is the scripture that I use to make sure that I don't get arrogant. Because if he blessed me with it, I want it for the rest of my life. And I want to make sure I don't lose it. So this is what happened. Look at this, in Proverbs 16 and 18, can I read it to you out of the Message Bible? He says, first pride, then the crash. Yep. Yep. This to me is for the religious community. The bigger the ego, the harder you fall. Can I tell you something? You don't have to take my stuff for me to give you glory. You don't have to put me in a hospital for me to build a prayer life. I pray because I want to, not because I have to. You, and I'm trying to tell some of y'all, you got to look at me. You got to learn. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. That you, every time you inhale, exhale. Every time you get something, God did it. Every time you have an accomplishment, God said it. Every time you see something coming in your house, God did it. You can't say, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did. You did nothing. Greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. So immediately, the Bible says, 12 months later, he started talking. Allow me to show you the signs of you being cut down. Because some of y'all have been cut, and you still walking around here like you're not cut. Sign number one is that when you've been cut, is that your position change. The Bible says, the moment that this came out of his mouth, he was driven away from people. Which means that you, were, you used to sit on the throne, now you're out in the field. You're not in the same position. You used to sit in the house and you act like you were married. Now you're still married, but you think you're single. Mm. You used to sit in the seat of a parent, now you up here smoking a blunt with your kids. I'm just... Your position has changed. You used to be the supervisor, and certain things as the head, you don't do with the tail. But your position changed, so now you're not in the seat of authority anymore. You don't sit at the head, you don't run at the way. Your position has changed. Number two, your circle change. Mm. What do you mean in circle change? Daniel had told him, and you will live with the wild animals, which means that now you are in a circle of people who are wild. In other words, these are the people that tell you, you ain't got to go to church. These are the people that tell you, it don't take all of that. These are the people that tell you, you know God for yourself. These are the people that tell you, you ain't got to go to church. You can worship God where you at. These are the people that tell you, oh, it's okay. Come on, drink with me. These are the people that tell you, come on, smoke with me. These are the people when you say, I'm going to try not to drink no more. They be like, oh, you're going to be all right. Take it to the head. These are the people that hand you the blunt. These are the people that take you to the strip club. These are the people that hand you the dollar. These are the people that help you make it rain. These are the people. Your circle has changed. 
These are the people that encourage you to be wild. Not only that, your appetite change. Your appetite change. These are the things that you said that you would never smoke, you would never drink. These are the things that you, what, what do you mean by that? The Bible said, and he ate grass like ox. Some of y'all not eating the grass, you smoking it. Ooh, it got quiet at 1230. Lord, I'm going to need you to break through this weed in the name of Jesus. I need you to interrupt their high because some of them were smoking on their way here. <laughs> here goes somebody all rev. Don't mess up my high. <laughs> At least I came in the building. Your appetite has changed. Now you don't desire who you used to desire. You desire strange people. And when you desire that, watch me, your appetite changed. Now you start craving things that you never used to crave before. Oh, my God. So your position changed, your circle changed, your appetite changed, then your look changed. What do you mean your look changed? Please pay attention. This is a king. The Bible says, what do you mean by this look? The Bible says, and his body was drenched with the dews of heaven until his hair grew like the feathers and an eagle, of an, of an eagle. Here it is. His hair is all wild. His nails are like the claws of a bird. This is a king. And your appearance changed that you start looking like who you hanging with. You start looking like what you've been eating. You start looking like who you've been partnering with. Watch me. You, now you start looking like who you sleeping with. Because the weaker one takes on the personality traits of the stronger one. Now, you've got lost in the relationship. Now, this is called a soul tie. Now, this thing got you waking up at night. This thing got you sneaking around. This thing got you tracking where they at. This thing got you bugging, breaking codes in their phone. This thing got you... You all on the bushes like this. Because you wild now. You like a wild animal. You all at Walmart going from aisle to aisle. This ain't you. This is not you. When did you ever let somebody have this kind of control over you? Oh, but I came to get you today. The devil season is up. And God is about to get you back to your rightful. Ah, I got some stubborn spirits up in here today. Okay. Okay. Let me check my clock. <laughs> I can't stay at some of y'all. You sitting here like, <laughs> allow me to release. So I was, this word really came to me Friday when I was in California. I was preaching, and the Lord said, tell them that they last six are going to be better than they first six. So I got to get you ready for your July, August, September, October, November, December. Can you do me a favor? I just need to use you if you don't mind. Can you touch three people around you and say, hey, your ladder is about to be greater. Yerando! Some of y'all ain't touching nobody. I need you to get anointed. I need you to make sure if you know somebody that need a ship, I need you to go find them. Say, hey, hey, it's already looking better. You in the right place at the right time. The devil should have killed you when he had a chance. Come on, tell somebody. It's getting ready to happen. Open your mouth. In advance and shout, glory! The devil is about to be cut off. 
Hey! Come on, y'all. If you ready to come out, release the praise right here. Go! We out here now. We out here now. I'm excited about your comeback. I'm excited about your bounce back. I'm excited about your ladder. Everybody knew you were crazy. They were talking about you, but I'm celebrating you. When you get restored, everything connected to you is about to go up. Your kids going up, your salary going up, your marriage going up, your joy going up, your peace going up, your wisdom going up, your anointing going up, your favor going up. On your way to your seat, tell somebody, let's go, 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 let's go. Put a demand on them. Let's go. Hey, Jeff, let's go. Let's get out of here. Let's do this. You ready? Let's go. Let's go. Have a seat. Have a seat. It's a process. 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 You ready? You just think you're just not gonna go back to the seat. There's some seats you gotta sit in before you get there. And the first seat that you gotta sit in is that you gotta get your focus back. You gotta get your focus back. What do you mean you gotta get your focus back? You ready? Bring the scripture up on the screen. He says, and this is in Daniel 4, 34 through 37. He says, at the end of that time, what does that mean? Watch me. It was an appointed time for you to go through. At the end of that time, your life shift. Your life change. You have made it to the end of that suffering season. At the end of that time, how do we know, how we know, how we know you change? He says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, did what? I raised my eyes towards heaven. What does that mean? I used to look at you and figure out if I needed your validation or if I needed your approval. But now I could care less about you. I look towards the heaven because my help comes from the Lord. I don't care about pleasing you. I got my focus back. Whatever you say I don't need to do, I'm not worried about what you say. I need to hear what he say. So the first seed is you got to get your focus back. Once you get your focus back and you look to God, the second seed is you got to hear me now. Once you get your focus back, then he gives you your sanity back. In other words, I get my mind back. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, you think I still got the same mindset that I had when I was running around looking crazy, but my mindset has changed. What do you mean your mindset is changed? Things that you thought weren't important, they are important to me. I got my mind back. I realized that I don't belong to you. I realized that certain things I can't do, certain things I can't go, certain ways I can't act, certain things you could do it. I, I'm not saying that it's a sin, but it don't go with my destiny. You can get away with certain things I can't get with. Can I, well, you know why? Because your kingdom not as big as mine. I'm just... <laughs> I got my mind back. I got my sanity back. I'm not as crazy as I used to be. Is there anybody in the building can admit that you had a crazy season? I need you to pay attention because if, if, if somebody don't raise their hand, that is, that's Miss Nebuchadnezzar or that's Mr. Nebuchadnezzar. Is there anybody that can admit you was crazy for a season? You were dealing with some stuff you know you shouldn't have dealt with. You were doing some things you know that did not go with you. But God, all I want is those that got their mind back. 
I need those out what's me and I get mad when I think about how much time I gave the devil so once I get my focus straight then I get my sanity back this cheer it's almost like it's like a you gotta how can I put this? The next cheer won't show up until you praise him. Yeah, uh, hold on, wait a minute. So some of y'all say, well, I can't praise him yet because I haven't gotten back to where I used to be. No, you praise him for the progress that you already see. Anybody can praise him when you get there, but people of faith, we have what we call praise breaks. I might not be everything that I should be, but I know I'm not who I talk to me, y'all. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let, me, let me kill something. Let me kill something. Let me kill something. Look at me. Everybody look at me. Praise is not quiet. Let me go over here. Let's go over here. I want you to hear me. Praise is an expression. It is something that it must be. See, if you notice, when the right ones start praising God, it puts a demand on your praise. <laughs> so let, let's break it down. Let's break it down. Because some of y'all, here, here goes some of y'all. Well, he knows. He knows my heart. Let's, let's deal with that. Let's deal with that. Let's, come on, let's talk. So you say, well, it's in my heart. So you're just going to hold it in? That's called gas. Look at me, look at me. So I'm married to Anna Hannah. We've been married for 30 years. Imagine if I walked in my house every day and I just look at her. And I don't say nothing to her. I just look at her. But I never say, I never say hi. I never say I love you. I never say I appreciate you. But I just look at her. She's going to get to the point like, you need to tell me something. Because, I mean, I keep doing what I'm doing up in here and you ain't saying nothing. And I hear the Lord to tell me to tell some of y'all, I keep doing what I keep doing. I keep making a way out of no way. I keep waking your behind up every morning. I keep blessing you over and over again. And you just going to come in my house. I told you, you enter into his gates with thanksgiving. You enter into his court with praise. He say, lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion. He say, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. I'm going to count to three. And I need some of y'all to take a minute and release your praise. One, two, three, go. Say, help me lift them. Help me give them praise. Ready? Let's go. I got my focus back. I got my sanity back. Oh, my God. I got my praise back. 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 Ready? So while I was praising God, another seat showed up. And what is this seat? This is called the seat, Terrell, of favor. I'm going to break this thing down to you. 
<laughs> I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me. So watch me. When you start praising God, when you start praising God, your praise is a sound. It releases something in the atmosphere, and it hits where God wants it to hit. Here's, here's the thing, Sam. You got to get this, because we're living in a world that some of y'all think, I got to run up behind you. I got I to gotta send you something in your inbox. I got to DM you. I got to kiss your behind. I got to do 10 jumping jacks. No, I just got to praise him. And if I praise him, he going to do put some on me called favor. Now watch me, watch me. Everybody lean in. Please lean in. If you get this revelation, you're going to see in your next six months, you're going to see how God's about to show up and show out in your situation. Watch me, watch me, watch me. Because if you, watch me, while you praising God, hear what he says right here. He says, he says, my advisors and nobles did what? They sought me out, which means that I'll make your blessing come looking for you. I literally make them seek you out. They don't know your address. So they'll run into somebody and say, have you, do you know this person? Yep. Can you go find them for me? What am I trying to say to you? Your name is about to be called. You are about to blow my mind. My name is... Jabari, you ain't the only one that can sing this song. He's about to blow my mind. Oh, oh, oh. My name... <laughs> Y'all will make a fool out of me. On the count of three, everybody release your name. One, two, three. John Hannah. I'm going to give you one more chance. Don't play with me. Your resume is about to be pulled. Your application is about to be pulled. He's about to turn your no into a yes. Say your name again. One, two, three. John. <laughs> this is crazy. 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 Come on, everybody, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. When you stand, you make me preach faster. When you stand, you make me preach faster. So watch me. So the next seat is called, hey, Teddy, it's called the seat of honor, which means that God's about to shine the light on you, and you will be honored for who you are and for what you do. Wait, wait, wait. But the honor really isn't for you. The honor is for God to be glorified. Because you've learned that if anybody come up to me, oh, you amazing, you'd be like, to God be the glory. <laughs> come on, let's practice. Can I practice to make sure you got this? Can, you, can we just practice if you don't mind? Can you just touch it and say, hey, hey, your life is amazing. Respond, 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 respond. To God be the glory. Come on, tell somebody. To God be the glory. So you're about to be honored. You're about to be honored. You're about to get your honor back. This shirt won't stay down. I guess I'm flying away. I guess I'm going to another level. Let me pop my wings. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so, so what, I, need, I need some of y'all to understand honor. I need you to understand honor. See, because you're so used to not being celebrated. You're so used to keep people bringing up your fall that they don't see your progress. But God said, I'm going to let the right people honor your movement. Okay, Holy Ghost talking. Holy Ghost talking. So he says, you're so used to living, listening to the complaints, you can't acknowledge the honor. And the honor is supposed to be louder than the complaints. 
So when you learn how to accept honor and point it to God, you get the next seat, which is called your kingdom. <laughs> your kingdom. And I need you to understand your kingdom. Your kingdom is what God gives you and you work for. Like, for example, like Joshua, you do, you do special events. That's your kingdom. That is your kingdom. And it is up to you to protect your kingdom. Because your kingdom is the areas that you have influence in. Like, if, you, if you're this amazing cook that you are, Every time you hit the kitchen, that's your kingdom. Every time you do what you do, that's your kingdom. And people think, how did you get it? God gave me. Favor ain't fair. As a matter of fact, I'm shocked that he trusts me with what he gave me. I need somebody. Watch me. Like, like Lane, 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 Lane. Like this is your kingdom, Terrell, if you're saying that you're going to build prayer up, that means that God can trust you in prayer and you're going to protect your kingdom. Denzel, if you're telling me God's going to like bless your voice and you're going to go places, which means I'll even send you, this is going to be different for some of y'all, I'll send you into dark spaces because your gift is bigger than the church. I'll let you go stand up in a lounge and when you open your mouth, They'll feel what they never felt in a lounge before. Y'all ain't got to say that to me. And they'll come and seek you out and say, I can't explain it, but I need you to come to my event. And when you get to that event, that's your kingdom. And when you give you the microphone, you don't hold the mic like you a servant. You take authority. Um, I got somebody today. I got somebody today. How many of y'all believe your next opportunity, you're going to take authority over your Let's go here. Let's go here. So you get your kingdom back. Now, I want you to really listen to what I'm about to say to you. Because some people think, the Bible says, and he was restored to his throne. And I want you to pay attention. It is, it is, go to, so he says, I was restored to my throne. I need you to look at me. There's a big difference between this seat and this seat. I need y'all to lean in for me. Some of y'all are accepting this smaller seat because you feel I messed up so bad that I'll never get that back. So I'll just settle for this little bitty seat because this little seat is better than being where I was. I want to thank you for having that kind of spirit. But I came to tell you, he didn't bring you this far to make you small. You can't, I can't explain it. I can't explain it. I can't. And some of y'all, you're settling for that smaller seat. But your blessings, if, if he put on you everything that you're supposed to have, you would break this seat because your blessings are too heavy for this little folded seat. As a matter of fact, this seat is supposed to be temporary because we could, we could fold it. We could fold it. What, what are you, why are you folding them? I'm folding them because I'll never be here again. I'll never be here again. After everything I went through, you ain't never got to worry about me doing this again. Is there anybody? I learned my lesson. I mean, I learned my lesson. Come on, hold, hold on. So, so, hey, Benaya, so what kind of seat should you be expecting, Teddy? What kind of seat should you expect? It? Even is not your seat. Even a lateral move? What you had is not for this seat. Oh my God. Can I show you what I mean? The Bible says, and he became, and he became, and he became 
not even, but even greater. And he became, and he became, and he became even greater. I need y'all to lean in if you don't mind. If you lean in and give me your undivided attention, he's about to expand your thought pattern. Because some of y'all, watch me, what you keep praying for, look at me, is what you've already had. I just want to go back to the way it used to be. Well, what if he enlarged your territory? That it goes beyond what it used to be. But you can't push past it. You can't even pray past that. And he told me to tell you, you're not even. You're even greater. You have settled for good, but good is the enemy of great. And I need your praise to match your expectation. Wait, 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 wait. So, you ready? Look at me. So the pandemic took us through something, and some of y'all hit hard times. And you kept going, I just want to go back to the way it used to be. Even that confession stops you from hitting your, bit, your greater. And the Lord told me to tell some of you all, you got to hear me. Your last six months, listen, greater is about to be presented to you. Everybody stand, because we, we about to prophesy. Uh, everybody stand. Everybody stand. I've been messed up all day. Can I be, can I be honest with you all? I keep telling God, I know what I'm used to. And I don't see what I'm used to. And in this sermon, he told me, I don't need you to see what you used to. I need you to see what you've never seen. I watch social media, I pay attention to Twitter, and when, when Beyonce came out with her first concert, the crowd was crazy. And everybody's about, look at Beyonce. I wasn't really looking at Beyonce. I was looking at the crowd saying, for your glory. You're gonna fill a stadium up, and they're gonna come in to give you glory. Look how some of y'all looking. And to prove to me he could do it, there's a prophet in Africa named Prophet Joshua. Him and a, another singer in Africa named Nathaniel, they went to a coliseum in, in the UK. And to see thousands of people, you would have thought that it was a secular concert. So he gave me a glimpse in another country what I couldn't expect. And the Lord told me to tell you, the same way I'm seeing, you supposed to see. You supposed to see your business, your ministry, your name. Everything about you is about to go to a level that it's never been to before. So here's the line. I'm done. Bring this last scripture in Matthew. Watch me. So we don't seek God for the stuff. Seek ye first. His kingdom... Because your kingdom going to be connected to his kingdom and his righteousness on how to get your kingdom. And his righteousness on how to get your kingdom. So while you're seeking his kingdom and his righteousness, everything else is going to start lining up for you. And it's going to be even greater than what you've already had. I only want to talk to faith people. What if I told you that your praise it's going to start making things line up for you. Just start lining things up for you. And all you got to do is show up in the right month 
and everything is going to be laid out for you. But it won't happen without your praise. So all day we've been singing this song. It's an old school song. Some of y'all might not know it because you're so young. So allow us to introduce you to an old school song. Go ahead. I need the old. I need the How long you need them? Every hour. What you want? Are you open to it? Are you open to it? So we about to do something. For some of you, I'm about to take you old school for a minute. We were taught that there are two words that give room to the spirit. And it's just yes, Lord. Everybody just say, yes, Lord. <laughs> when you say, yes, Lord, that means that I'm open for you shifting me. I'm open for even greater. Come on, everybody, just say, yes, Lord. Come on, one more time. Tell them, yes. Mm. Come on, lift your hands and close your eyes and just say, yes, Lord. Yeah. You're about to get in your rightful place. He's about to enlarge your territory. Come on, y'all. I didn't come to hype you. I'm not your hype man. I'm the man of God. I heard what the Lord told me to tell you. And he's about to give you access all roads are about to be open when it comes to you he's about to give you access to everything that he put in place for you please obey me when i tell you we about to clap our hands for about 60 seconds and the only thing gonna come out of my mouth is yes lord everybody start clapping your hands just start saying yes yes lord Yes, 
Yes, Lord. Yes, in my mind. Yes, in my body. Yes, with my ministry. Yes, with my name. Yes, Lord. Yes, with my will. Yes, Lord. Open your mouth. Tell the Lord yes. Close your eyes. Lock in the God. Yes, with my gift. Yes, with my talent. Yes, with my business. Yes, in my finances. Yes, in my relationship. Come on, tell the Lord yes. Yay! Yay! Give me my seat back. Get me out of the hand of the enemy. Give me my desire back. I want a desire to please you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. Every young adult, do me a favor. It don't have to take you as long as it took me. You can get it in your 20s and your 30s. He's about to give you full access. Clap your hands again and say, yay. Come on, tell the Lord yes. Come on, tell the Lord yes. Yes in my stubborn area. Yes in my resistant area. Break down every wall. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on, let's go here. Yes in my relationships. Yes in my friendships. Yes in my companionship. Anything that don't mean me right, break it right now. Yes in my addiction. Anything that I'm addicted to that don't go with my kingdom. I say yes Lord. I wish you had you a push buddy. I wish you had you somebody that will grab your hand and say, let's push together. The enemy don't want to let you go. Grab that hand and say, hold my hand. Help me push. Help me push. Help me push. Some of y'all need to pray in the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all need to pray in the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all need to pray in the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on in. Come on in. Invade my territory. Invade every area that the devil is hiding in. Go to the court door of my spirit. Rebuke everything that's not like you. Create within me a clean heart and renew the right spirit. Purge me with hyssop. Break me, shake me, make me, get me the way you want me to be. I give you my everything. Yes, Lord. Hold their hand. Tell them push. It's about to get greater. A door is about to open. He's about to give me a way of escape. He's about to put me out of a bad situation. He's about to cut me loose. Don't you let me go until I get free. y'all to free me up I'm about to pray something I come against every bad relationship I come against every soul tied I ask God to get you out of the grip of the enemy I pray that God gets you out of the spirit I pray that God deliver you from the witch I pray that God deliver you from manipulation I pray that God deliver you from stubbornness I pray that God deliver you from witchcraft I come against everything that's holding you back the devil is a liar you have a kingdom Everybody let that hand go clap your hands and shout as loud as you can. Yay! Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing 
on the altar and I want more. I need more. I desire more. As the deer pants after the water brook, my soul is thirsty for you, oh God. I need God like a fish need water. I need God like a cake needs sugar. I need God every second. I need God every step of the way. I need you, God. Come on in. Lord, this ain't even 12 hour prayer, but I feel a push in prayer. God, I wish you had a prayer partner. Just turn and look at somebody and say, hey, hey, you pray for me while I pray for you. You pray for me while I pray for you. I pray that God open the door. I pray that God bind the enemy on every hand. I pray that God get you out of every bad situation. I pray that God let you recover all. 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 I pray that He restore unto you the years. I pray that He restore unto you the years. I pray that He restore unto you the years. I pray that He restore unto you the years. I pray that you make up for lost time. I pray that you make up for long time. I pray that he open the door. I pray that he prove to you. I pray that he prove to you. I pray that he prove. Come on, you Pentecostal children. Pray in the Holy Ghost for the next 20 seconds. Eba, shake it, rosoto, batatarabasanda. This is spiritual. This is warfare. This is warfare. We fight for your kingdom. We fight for your kingdom. We refuse to let the devil have what belong to you. Oh my. Come on, we gonna leave. I need you to go to three people and say, hey, 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 expect even greater. Your next relationship is going to be even greater. Your next assignment is going to be even greater. Your next kingdom is going to be even greater. Your next job is going to be even greater. Your next house is going to be even greater. Your next business is going to be even greater. Your next contract is going to be even greater. Oh my, sorry. Your next release is going to be even greater. Your next address is going to be even greater. Your next contract is going to be even greater. Your next anointing is going to be. 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 I feel the oil being poured on you right now. But I feel the anointing of God. I feel the anointing of God. I feel the oil is being poured in the building. Squeeze that head and say, even greater, greater results, greater results.
results, greater results, greater results, greater results, greater results, greater results, greater results. You're gonna have better 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 results. You're gonna have greater, greater belong to you. Greater belong to you. You made the sacrifice. You made the sacrifice. Come on, we gotta go. Some of y'all, this is spiritual. You don't understand it, but follow me. Just follow me. Just do whatever I tell you to do. Test three people that say, even greater. Yeah. Your children are going to be blessed. Your family is about to be blessed. Your village is about to be blessed. Your community is about to be blessed. Your city is about to be blessed. Your house 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 is about to be blessed. Your children are about to be blessed. I cancel every assignment of the enemy. That's coming after your children. The devil is a liar. I want the anointing to be on you even greater. I want the anointing to be on you even greater. I want the anointing to be on you even greater. I want the anointing to be on you even greater. I want the anointing to be on you even greater. Just give me a few more minutes. I gotta come against disappointment. I gotta come against heartbreak. I gotta come against disappointment. It's gonna be bigger than what you're disappointed about. It's gonna be greater. Everybody lift your hands and worship God right here. For even greater. Take the music now. Let me hear worship. I gotta hear worship. I gotta hear worship. I gotta hear worship. among the greater come on we gonna move come on y'all give me just 20 more seconds please open your mouth mm. Oh. Mm. come on I just gotta walk among you for a few seconds let me walk among you for a few seconds because as I walk, something's breaking. Something is breaking in the atmosphere. Come on, give me a few more seconds. Open your mouth. He's attracted to sound. He's attracted to sound. Open your mouth. Come on, 
Batata da basi, randa da masi, anda da ba 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 si, toto remi anda da basi, hikondo lomo saya, manda da basi, sheke roto, batanda da ba. I come against every person that's been hitting you behind your back. I come against every negative comment, every negative conversation that you got wind of. I cancel every word curse. I come against the word curses. And I call you a mighty woman of God. I call you chosen. I call you beautiful. I call the hand of God to be on your life. I come against every bad relationship that ever hit you, that make you question yourself. The devil is a liar. Shia. Open your mouth for 10 more seconds. 10. Mm. 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 I hear the Lord say, keep desiring to be better. Whatever you do, don't give up your desire to be better. Even if you fall, get up and keep desiring to be better. Give me 10 seconds of you worshiping God. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. in between your worship just keep saying even greater 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 okay i need to come down okay okay Question, who are you that God would send a special message to let you know that his hand is on your life? Who are you to let that God would warn you that your season of hell is over? And I need you to prepare for greater, even greater. So there are about 20 of you in this building. There are about 20 of you. There are about 20 of you. That I literally got up to get you today. That it's a divine appointment. That he brought you in this building for me to get you. Because his hand is on your life. The stump has been covered, it's been protected, the roots are still there, and you on good soil. So what you're about to produce is about to be even greater. If everyone stands so no one can have to walk over you, this will be quick. There are about 20 of you in this building, you know that I'm talking to you. Number one, there's somebody that need to accept the Lord. There's somebody that's already saved, but you're not connected to a village. You're not rooted in the right vineyard. The, for the right fruit to come forward. You know I'm talking to you. Don't make me beg you to get to even greater. Get out of your seat and meet me right here. Move. Come now. Get up here right now. Stand right here. 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 
Stand right here. Stand right here. Move. 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 There's a chasing. There's a chasing that he keeps chasing you. Give me a high five. He keeps chasing you. Oh my God. He won't give up on you. I need your discernment to be a little bit sharper because it's some people that he's about to rip from you. Adama say shiki Torah ba 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 Get out of your seat. I'll count down. It's about three to five more of you all that's supposed to be up here. I'll count down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four, three, two, one. Is that it? Is that it? For those that are up here, some more coming. Come on. So we're going to take you in the back and we're going to pray with you. And my team is going to reach out to you. But you need to know that you're not here by chance or by accident. They're still coming? They're still coming. They're still coming? So we're gonna take you in the back. My team is gonna pray with you, get some information. You're gonna hear from us again. And I'll see you next Sunday. If you don't come to church, I'm gonna find out where you live. And I'm gonna bust throw a brick through your windows. I'm joking. Do me a favor, you're gonna turn around if you don't mind and you're gonna follow this gentleman. We got you today, come on, follow him. Come on. Get it together now. Come on, give God a hand, praise for souls. Everyone have a seat, I'll have you out in five minutes. Have a seat, I'll have you out in five minutes. <laughs> Y'all good? I got you, bro. I got you. So everyone, I want you to hear me, and we're going to collect our tithes. For some of you all, you did run well. Who did hinder you? That at one point you were tithing, but you got off. I need you to get back on your square. You can't keep what belongs to him. You can't. You cannot keep what belongs to him. For everyone else, I want us to give what I call an even greater seed. Everybody hear me clearly. Money cannot always be your issue. Can you just open your mouth and say, money will not always be my issue. In other words, God has to, he has to channel money through you. He literally channels finances through you. You don't hold on to the dollar, you release it so that you can get your next. Servants serve with their hands open, not with their hands closed. If you serve, you serve with your hands open. I want everyone to get a seed. If you look at the bottom, you can give one of the four. It is either 23, 46, 90, 69, or 92. Watch me. He would never ask for what you don't have because he knows what you do have. 
But to give nothing, to say to him, I ain't giving you nothing. Come on now, stop playing. He's been too good to you. And I need some of y'all, he will graduate you from the 23 to the 46. He'll move you from the 46 to the 69, from the 69 to the 92. And then for some of us, you do like me, you give 192. Because you know to whom much is given, much more is required. I just want to see you make it to your destiny. And for some of y'all, if you follow this format, you'll never be cut down. Your cheery will never be cut. Because you have to make sure that he's glorified in every area of your life. If you need an envelope, you can raise your hand. We'll give you an envelope. If you want to text and give, text the words NOCSE to 91694. If you're on our app, you can give. You need the QR code. You can look on the screen. You can get that. But everyone get a seat. If someone said, well, I don't have the 23, then you get the best seed you can in your hand. But to give nothing is not an option. Come on, stand to your feet once you got your seat. I got to get you out of here. It's 2.30. Your kids across the street screaming. Come on, lift your seat up to the Lord. On Saturday, we're going to be doing our prayer on the nine. It starts at 12 noon. At 12 noon, at 12 noon, we'll be praying on the nine. Meet me on 79th and Greenwood at 12 noon. We're only going to be for about an hour. You can leave after that. Can you not pray with me one hour to cover our community? All right, lift your seat up to the Lord. Repeat after me. I'm a tithe and a giver. And I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. Come on, say this. I am living in Ephesians 3.20 for the rest of my life. Hey, my YouTube family. I am excited that June the 9th, Friday, June the 9th, we are having our annual mid-year cry, which is a 12-hour prayer meeting. Hey, I can't do this without you. I need as many of you all that can to book yourselves to come to Chicago. In this building, 12 hours, 12 noon to 12 midnight. Now, I know that everyone can't make it, but guess what? We'll be live right here on YouTube. Why? Because we're family. And I want to make sure that we stay together by praying together. Let's give you the date again. June the 9th, 12 noon to 12 midnight. The mid-year cry. The God of a breakthrough. Let's go.